So first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're from. Uh, and welcome to this question and answer for TICB and TICC trauma-informed coaching. And we hope to answer any questions you have here tonight. And those that don't get answered, of course, we're completely open to having you reach out to us as usual. Uh, we're always here. We always like to hear from people. Uh, so please, if anything, you uh, leave tonight and say, oh, I should have asked that. Don't worry about it. We're always around and you can send a question, ask it, call us or email. Um, so I just want to start by uh, introducing myself. My name is Brad Hardy. I am one of the co-owners of Moving the Human Spirit. And my background is in stress and chaos management, uh, trauma, and I have been with Susan moving the trauma-informed coaching platform uh, forward for over the last, has it been, Sue, maybe 10 years? Yeah, close to it. Yeah, so we've, uh, we have come a long way in it, and we're quite pleased that we are in a position now to be able to uh, offer this certification through the International Coaching Federation. Uh, it's accredited through them. We feel absolutely honored to be able to produce a program that they hold in high enough esteem that we can then have coaches go out into the world and share their gift with other people. Uh, Sue and I started together uh, by going to the same coaching college. That's where we met and we became fast friends. Uh, we had the same kind of personalities. We had the same types of intentions. We both were working in some areas that seemed a bit dark to other coaches. Mine was uh, stress and trauma and chaos. And uh, Susan's was with gifted children and families in crisis. So um, we spent a great deal of time talking with each other and how we would move these platforms together um, and in our lives and then eventually decided to uh, do it together because we enjoyed each other's company enough and we were sort of duplicating everything that we were doing and checking in with each other to see what uh, the other person was doing. And eventually we just said, hey, why don't we do this together? Uh, exactly. Two is always better than one. Exactly. So I, maybe it was different for Susan, but it was, it was quite a great joining. I agree. No, I, I totally, yeah, I totally agree. You know what I mean? Uh, I think both Brad and I struggled as coaches uh, for about the first two years of our coaching practices. And I think many coaches do that, that uh, as well. And so when I'm speaking with coaches now, I always tell them, don't do this alone, right? You know, partner with some like-minded people. They don't necessarily have to be coaches, but, um, you know, partner with other people that are interested in, in your vision and, uh, and create a vision together and, and move towards it. It makes it exciting, uh, way more fun and, uh, and far less cumbersome when there's a group of you that can, can, that can work together as a team. Mm -hmm. The great thing with Sue and I is that we, we, you know, we hit our stride because we both offer something completely different to our company. And we found that that was a really good mix when it came to the delivery of courses, to moving our coaching forward. We both have the same intention, as I said, and we certainly have uh, a heavy core value of integrity that moves us forward. Um, so, and she is incredibly gifted at something that I'm not and uh, vice versa, we think, or at least I hope. So it makes us a really nice fit. And then the other stuff that we're both gifted at, we get to come together and play in, in our spare time with the company and just say, what if, and Susan always says, even better if, so it makes it move in a direction that brings us today to be in front of you guys to answer some of your questions on these programs. Yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> Sue, I think, should I just go ahead and share the screen and we can look at these programs? Yeah, you know what, let's just kind of give a high level overview of what they all are. Um, and then if people have more in depth questions, then they're more than welcome to reach out to me and, and, uh, and we can have an in depth conversation. Okay, great. So I'll see here, I'm just going to bring this up on screen. Oh wait, it looks like our video is a bit frozen. It may catch up there. 
we're on a bit of a delay. So the trauma informed, welcome. Oh, great. Good, Sylvie. Thank you. Trauma informed coaching training description. Sue, do we look like we're still moving okay there? It looks like it. Okay, great. Uh, maybe it's just me that's frozen at this end. So what we'd like to do, um, we are the global leaders in trauma-informed coaching certification. And what that means is that we are the only company that is accredited through the International Coaching Federation to deliver uh, trauma-informed coaching. Now, that doesn't mean that someone might not be coming after us to do the same work, but we are definitely the ones that uh, initiated this movement and they felt quite happy to assist us in doing that after looking at our program. They do, uh, as you can appreciate, the coaching industry is quite aware of the challenges that we are seeing nowadays globally and what might assist them and us moving forward as a coaching community. So trauma-informed was something that they felt was going to be very well, um, uh, let's say very well used moving forward, uh, certainly needed quite, quite a bit. Yeah, and then COVID hit. <laughs> and then COVID hit, which duplicated the requirement of needing good trauma-informed coaches by quite a bit. I'm sure that everyone, no matter where you're from this evening, um, this particular pandemic doesn't uh, discriminate. So we're all affected by this particular global pandemic that has us moving into some places of trauma. So the great thing that we'd love to mention is that our course is 100% online. So you can take it from the comfort of your home or your office or or wherever else you see yourself. Um, so I'll just touch on the trauma-informed coaching basis. Um, and what you can do is you can certainly go ahead and ask questions as we go through because Susan is going to be monitoring the chat while I talk. Um, so she's able to ask any in-person immediate questions for you as I'm going through this stuff. And if there's anything that needs a bigger look, uh, Susan will just stop me. So the trauma-informed coaching basis basics is for you to learn the basics of coaching and how we do that with the ICF core competencies and the ICF ethical requirements. But we also put in coaching practice coaching techniques, as I'll go through the syllabus here in a minute, but also coaching practice, uh, coaching technique, we do uh, listening. So there's a few levels that cover the coaching basics piece of it. It comes out at 21 core competencies, five resource developments, which are CCEUs credits, which the ICF has accredited us with so that you can then pursue a professional coaching platform. So I'll just get into, instead of going through it too much, the syllabus is good for telling us um, a little bit more about it. So I'll do a top run of the trauma-informed coaching certification. That comes after the TICB. So if you have never coached before in your life, trauma-informed coaching basics is the platform that you'll want to take uh, to be able to then come into the trauma-informed coaching certification program so that you have a coaching basis to be able to play in a coaching environment, listen in a coaching environment, and also being able to ask the questions of a coach, learning the techniques of a coach. And what we do in the TIC program is that the lens then gets put quite heavily on how we work with trauma clients, how they are uh, affected by trauma, how they see trauma. We look at some brain science. Um, we look at techniques. We look at, uh, let's just go into, uh, I'll, before I get too far into all of the syllabus, we'll just pop on it. We also, I forgot to mention this last time, we also have a mentor bundle. And what that is, is, is after you go through the TICB, the TICC, and then we have a mentor bundle, which you can do with a group, seven sessions in a group, and then three sessions single. And what that does is prepare you to have a, an assessment done 
by the ICF to be able to be accredited at the ACC level. Certified. Certified, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, okay, certified. Susan is the uh, woman that deals with all of those questions. So if you have specific questions at the end of my song and dance, please just ask Susan because she'll be able to clarify some of those things specifically. Yeah. So let's just look quickly. Is there an application process? Susan, I'll let you uh, yeah. have a look at that. Um, so the syllabus for the TICB, we do a welcome and introduction and the structure on day one. And it is, a again, these classes are three hour classes. So the first one is introduction. There is a form on what is coaching, coaches versus other professions. So we go through that. That's a question that gets asked quite a bit. Uh, you know, how does coaching compare to other professions such as uh, therapy, counseling? Day two, we look at foundational understanding of all coaching, the introduction to the International Coaching Federation, because we are um, uh, certified with the ICF, accredited by the ICF, you get certified by them. But because we have an accreditation with them, uh, we make sure that we stick to their core competency models. And then we go through the other competencies through each one of the days. So demonstrating ethical practice embodies a coaching mindset, establishment and maintains agreements, cultivating trust and safety and maintains a presence. And that all gets taught and practiced in the first uh, TICB. And then we have coaching conversations, which are incredibly important. No coaching happens without coaching conversations and demonstration of coaching conversations. So as we go through the course, uh, the facilitators also demonstrate. So the facilitator that works in the TICB syllabus, they actually demonstrate what these are, how to have a coaching conversation. Uh, then we also have practice and dyads, which you'll do with one another. We move into a listening effectively. So as you can appreciate, one of the hugest things that we do in coaching is to make sure that we have an ability to effectively listen. Uh, without listening past what's being said, we're not able to then excavate some of the information that is required to have a good coaching conversation. We look at how to evoke awareness. And what that means is that we do an exploration in a coaching platform that digs a little bit deeper to actually get that client shifting from where they are to where they wanna be. And that of course is a very beautiful piece of the coaching. Demonstration again of coaching conversations. So what we wanna do is make sure that you have as much information as possible and how we can ensure that you do when it comes to this information is by actually showing you how it works. So we do that in real time in class and then we send you away in a dyad to practice with your fellow students. And that is really one of the sweetest parts of these programs is to be able to administer the practice in class, but also outside of class. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Yeah, a full visual auditory kinesthetic experience. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and that is also another thing that we learn a, a great deal about, especially with working in trauma. Sense, senses are very important when it comes to trauma work, but also important when it comes to everyday coaching. The other thing we look for is how to facilitate client growth. Well, of course, that happens over the process of the TICB. We learn that foundation and strengthen the muscles so that people have a really good understanding to be able to have the confidence. So we're really looking at building that confidence to be able to coach in the moment, wherever you are, a client, and no matter what they may have or bring to the table. Again, there's a demonstration on that. We're heavy on demonstration because people learn differently. We have a manual that goes with all of our programs, but we also think that people learn sometimes, as Susan says, kinesthetically in the moment when we're actually doing it. Some people learn visually, so to watch someone do it. So there's a few different layers that we like to put in this so that we have successful uh, class rates graduating. Also too, Brad, just to mention that um, all the sessions are recorded 
<clears throat> and you are able to go back and listen to all those recordings for up to three months after you've completed the program. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, day eight, you can see, is the sharing and completion. There is a group exam and there's open discussions, question and answers and wrap up. So does anyone have any questions that they would like to pop in the chat so far from this TICB before I move on to the TICC? So this is the trauma-informed coaching basics. And before I move from this to the TICC, which is the trauma informed certification, coaching certification. Anything? Thanks, Janet, for sharing. Yeah, I see Janet sharing there. Beautiful. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> so the TICC. So once we have the TICB completed, or again, I have to mention here, you, you, if you're already a certified coach, you can step into the TICC without be doing the TICB. You cannot do that if you're not a certified coach, but we also have certified coaches that come to the program in order to re-accredit themselves. And that requires a certain number of CCEU hours. And um, this particular program offers 31 of those. So, and 18.25 of the resource development, which is uh, more than enough for them to then uh, garner their accreditation again through the International Coaching Federation. Or is it certification, Susan? Uh, yeah, certification. So if they're up leveling to PCC or they're renewing their ACC or PCC or MCC, yeah. they have to have 24 CCEUs and this course offers 31. Got you. Okay. And Susan, I'll let you take Sarah's question there. I will. Thank you. Overview. So what we do is we really look at, um, you know, the, the first day is really about building a secure class. So when we're in the classroom, what we do is we make sure that people, uh, we build a safe environment. So we set class intention. We look at the requirements of the course. We go through some of the conduct that is expected. We're going to meet the ethical guidelines and professional standards from the ICF as we move through the course. Um, and we really want to create that experiential learning experience. And we get to do that on the first day. You know, we have an introduction, we set a class intention. And so we really start creating that safe place on the first day. When we get into day two, we start uh, dissecting some of what we're here to talk about. So we cover what trauma is, some of its causes, uh, tra uh, intruding trauma and disorders that go with it some of which you'll be aware of already. We start looking at creating awareness and the TIC foundationals, things like the due diligence, client referral. So we start putting those things in your lap the first day, uh, second day, sorry, because those are very important pieces. And as we go through it, you'll see how they uh, sort of flow in and out of what we're actually training. So I think you'll enjoy that. The coach preparedness, we, we do a lot of self-reflection exercises through the TICC so that we can really get in touch with, you know, what it is that we want to accomplish as coaches in a trauma lens, but also just how we can present and how we actually look at uh, our inner feelings around the work that we're doing to make sure that we're completely prepared as we go through. And this is where you end up getting the support to be able to do that as we do those self-reflection exercises. We look at the neuroscience of several things. One of them is journaling, but we also look at the neuroscience of the brain as well. You see some of that's in day five. So again, we look at a methodology to do this teaching. We do uh, demos in class. We're very demo forward. I think it's really important to be able to see how this works and to do it in real time is just an incredible learning experience. We also have class exercises. And that is something that we, again, as I said about the TICB, when it comes to TIC, I just don't think there's any more value than to be able to just do the exercise in class. And I, of course, I'm there to pop in and out uh, and see how people are doing. We can discuss how you're feeling about the exercises. We always have a debrief 
and we usually have a demo and question beforehand. We'll go much deeper into the levels of listening. In the uh, TICC, we go beyond the first three levels and we explore another level in listening. We look at emotional trauma and its effects and some recovery from it. We also look at holding that coach coaching presence and mindset in a manner that is uh, much more from a trauma-informed lens. Again, as I said, we look at brain sciences, emotional intelligence. Of course, we look at the power of prevention and some regulation, regulating, which is important, right? When we work with clients who may have done, uh, gone through a trauma in their life and really want to um, heal from that. Not that we heal, but we believe that everyone has the power to heal inside of them. And what we do is coax that energy and positivity out of them so that they can create a sustainable future going forward, whether they have trauma or not. Uh, we look at the gut brain axis, the vagus nerve, if anyone's familiar with that. You may also, we also cover the polyvagal theory briefly, which is very in tune with the vagus nerve. We look at neurotransmitters, post-traumatic growth, um, window of tolerance, which is where we want our clients to be in their calm state, not in hypo or hyper arousal, but right in the middle in that calm state. We look at empathy, compassion, and sympathy, and we dissect the difference between them which is incredibly important because we don't want to use um, the wrong uh, language or terminology with a trauma client and uh, without understanding fully what each one of those mean. We look at grounding. We look at the nervous system, autonomic nervous system. We look at the parasympathetic nervous system, the uh, sympathetic nervous system, uh, we look at more the heart brain and the connection that it has with the uh, cephalic brain, which is our head. We look at in time and through time, which is an exciting exercise. And we determine what each of us are and how we flow in and out of that. Then we use that particular model to work on a timeline, which is very fun. Uh, we take strengths that we may have um, garnered from our past, we bring them to the here and now and work with the trauma with those strengths, or we look forward on the timeline and see what are some strengths we can create moving forward to help us sustain ourselves and live a much more fulfilling life. We look at boundaries and triggers, which we prefer. <clears throat> we are getting more into the language of calling them. Uh, Nadine calls them memories. Uh, I call them being evoked. So we were trying to get away from the triggers, but we use that terminology because a lot of people recognize instantly what we mean by that. So we look at both of those, the triggers and the boundaries, how to set boundaries, why we should set them, and then some of the things that are triggering for people. The great release, reframe and redirect, which is a, a body of work where we look at how we um, we can set our clients up to do three different things, depending on where we're at in a coaching session with them, which will then move them in a solution focused positive direction, instead of leaving them in a anchored cemented negative aspect of their trauma. Values and belief work is incredibly important, not only in trauma work, um, but also in any type of coaching. It is really part of the foundation of coaching when we're working with clients so that they can start doing something that we call uh, becoming authentic self and understanding that they are enough. We look at the spiral of healing, which is actually the information comes from spiral dynamics. It's a, an extraction from spiral dynamics that talks about the um, way that we heal in a spiral manner. Super interesting. Of course, I'm obsessed about this stuff, so I find it all interesting. <laughs> it's my passion. I think um, most of us are, Bradley. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm preaching to the choir. Is that what they say? That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we look again on day 14 at the completion requirements. Uh, um, the motto operandi for us is that we are incredibly um, focused on um, the 
learning environment for our class. So we really make sure that all of the requirements for learning are met. And we really enjoy being able to make sure people feel fully engaged in what they're learning. Um, other modalities we look at, like what else is out there that we can look at and maybe if we are outside of our wheelhouse, we can send clients to other modalities. And those are things, you know, massage therapy, um, um, cranial shake roll work, touch therapy, somatics. So we look at a, a lot of those and there's newer ones coming on. We have conversations around suicide to make sure that if we ever encounter a client that may be thinking of suiciding, that we have the language and the communication and the questions to ask so that we make sure that they are safe and secure and that we've done our due diligence. We take a, a stab at the three brothers, shame, blame, and guilt, and we kind of shake them around a bit and look at what is the benefit of shame, blame, and guilt? Where does it come from? Is it inherited? Is it stories that we've created or someone else created for us? And then we have a look at recognizing wellness, which kind of ties it all in so that even though we know all of this information, let's also know when rec we can recognize wellness and when it's going to happen. So it's quite beautiful. Brad, Sylvie's just asking a question here, if we can go a little bit more in depth about the spiral of healing. You'd like me to do that? You'd like, uh, is there a time? Yeah, I will definitely do that. So the spiral of healing concept is that healing happens not on a linear level. So it's not like linear, but it happens very much in a spiral. So you'll, I'm going to get my hands in use here, Sylvia, so bear with me. Uh, so what happens is we start here with our trauma, if you will. And then we start healing and it's kind of, you know, we, we're ebb, ebb and flowing this, if you will. So we start this healing process and we're, we feel like we're drawing our strength towards us and we go around in this healing pattern. And then something, there's a roadblock and something kind of a, a road bump hits us. And then we drop down a bit. And in that moment, some people have two choices. They either feel like they'll never heal or they look at it and go, okay, well, I've been here before, let's start this process again. So, and some of it is a reminder that they have the strength to do that. And then they'll get to a particular roadblock that they've suffered before and they surpass it because they've already been there and they have the strength to do that. And they continue to heal in the spiral manner. And then another roadblock may face them and they may go back, you know, it's sort of that one step forward, two back. And then we I was just going to say that two yeah. steps forward, one step back. <laughs> yeah. So it's like we look at that as the spiral and then we come back to where we are in the present moment and we start the process again. But we don't start it again um, from the bottom. We start it from that next level of healing that we have successfully accomplished. So it's really that conversation around you know, um, healing is a process. I, I love to call it, you know, we're in a practice of our healing, right? Trauma, we're in a, a practice of healing this thing. And when people are getting closer to the end of their spiral of healing, I like to think of it as mastery. So we're constantly practicing for the mastery of healing. And that's kind of what I think about that spiral of healing. So we kind of have some fun exercises in the class that we dive into. So, and did you have another question, I believe, uh, Sylvie, around the nervous system? Yeah, the, the, the vagus nerve and gut brain. And I said that we cover that on day seven. Yeah, we cover that on day seven. And there's also, we do a bit of it. We do, we do um, a couple of different days overlapping with the nervous system, the vagus nerve. Uh, we look at some of the heart brain, the gut brain. I said the vagus nerve. We have another day that we look at the autonomic nervous system, which covers the sympathetic and parasympathetic. They're on different days. They're obviously attached, but um, they're, they're bigger areas for us to explore. And we look at, you know, what happens to people in each of them and, and where they are and stuff. So, yeah, so we do cover that. Some people might think at depth, but I think it's well worth, well worth listening to and looking at. And because the more that we know about it, then the more we're able to normalize some of our clients' experiences. 
And mm -hmm. that is actually a huge step in them recognizing that what our body's actually doing is exactly what it was evolved to do, which was protect the organism and we're the organism. So when it has these reactions, its number one goal is to make sure that we survive. So uh, it's, it's, you know, there's a great aha moment with clients when we look at those particular things. One of the things I talk about a lot when people phone and, and ask me about, you know, the, the, the different courses and that, and I talk about uh, tick and, and all the aspects that you guys are seeing here in front of you. And really a lot of it is about, um, you know, when tr a traumatic event happens, um, our amygdala gets hijacked. And so it's about massaging that and creating that safe space so that, that uh, the amygdala relaxes and we can move somebody back into their prefrontal cortex. And, and most coaching, uh, solution-focused coaching, and that happens from that prefrontal cortex space uh, and, and supporting our clients and moving forward. Great, good, thank you, Susan. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we talk a lot about this in the class. It's, again, I was gonna go on, but I'm just passionate about it, so I'll, I'll, I'll just slow up there a bit. So uh, again, you can go on the website to see some of this pricing. You can buy this as individual classes with no payment plan. You can buy it as a bundle class price. So you save, you know, $650 if that's what you desire to do. There's also a bundle price for your completion of getting ready for the ACC um, accreditation and certification through the ICF. I'm going to have to get that right, hey, Sue. It's the <laughs> ACC certification. Yep. And um, so this is on the website. And the person that you'd be talking to about it is Susan. So if you've had any questions around that, you would certainly be able to reach out to her. Actually, first, let's let's see. Does anyone have any other questions? That was sort of the over the top basics, the umbrella of what we do. Susan's uh, phone number is here. You can reach out to her, her email address. We have the trauma-informed coaching site is where you'll find the information about the coursework. And if you're so inclined, go visit our mother site, which is movingthehumanspirit.com. And that actually will tell you a bit more about um, the work that we do, It'll tell you a lot about the associates that we align with and the facilitators for the coursework you'll find on the trauma-informed coaching site. Some of those you'll also see in our associates page. They do work with us as well, not just facilitation. So I just really invite you to uh, go in there and have a look at this information and reach out if you have more questions. And let's see, what else do we have? Um, any other questions? I think it's just really important, Brad, to let people know that uh, that we walk the talk. We're not we didn't uh, we're not just training this stuff. We actually are fully immersed as trauma informed coaches. You know, working with the Canadian military, uh, we work with first responders, we work with sex and, and rape victims. You know, I mean the the you know there's a whole gamut there, um, and uh, yeah, I mean this this body of work has been a real passion project for us. And, and, and the coaching for us came first. And then it was after the success rate that we were having that coaches uh, were coming to us, asking us to train them. And that was how the, uh, the trauma-informed coaching certification really was born. Yeah, yeah, it's quite amazing. And I see you have a question there, Sylvia, as far as coaching examples. Right now, we don't have any because you're going to if you can appreciate what we do in the classroom environment is actually coach trauma. And it's a very personal thing. So um, the only thing we'd ever be able to actually put up on YouTube or what have you would be our regular life coaching. But when we do trauma coaching, it's, it's an incredibly personalized experience. And the information that gets exchanged in the classrooms is confidential. So we haven't actually um, had anyone that said, yeah, go ahead, put that up to the public view. So it's not that we would be frightened to do that. That's actually why we do quite a bit of the work in class and actually demo it with students that are there that, you know, because most people have experienced a trauma that come to our class. But yes, we find that the, um, 
the confidentiality, we do not have the ability to actually show actual trauma coaching. Now, it doesn't mean in the future, would we not mock up some of those or someone might step into that and say, you know what, I'd be happy to let you view the video. So we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, Sarah's asking about afternoon even, evening sessions. Yeah, I'm just typing that in there now. So yeah, Sarah, so we actually have an afternoon session coming up uh, February the 11th, and it will be from 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it will run on uh, Monday and Thursday evenings. And uh, Erica has uh, asked about how uh, we find work in trauma coaching. Well, there's several ways. We do discuss it on the last day in the COPE uh, case study. We also talk as we go through the course, because that is a question that always comes up. The latest one has been the, that we have looked at. If you are thinking about actually working in trauma-informed field and running your own coaching company, uh, the unfortunateness about the pandemic has led a lot of people to need to seek out trauma-informed coaches. So if your interest is actually to form your own coaching company, I know that has been a lot of what the grads have been focusing on lately. But in truth, it's very endless. We, we work in, uh, we have some grads that are moving into uh, racial injustice and working, doing trauma coaching there. We have some grads that are working in the platforms of wanting to move into medical because the medical staffs are being completely overrun these days. So I think there's a lot of possibility to be able to do this type of work. We run through how we have created programs and how we, sorry, and what I mean by programs is actually getting contracts from company to then deliver coaching as a service. So we talk a bit about that. And then the other thing that we do as some people are probably already aware of is that Susan and I really make ourselves available to assist people. We had a, uh, one of our students uh, from, I believe it was the July class who just kept in touch. She had simply put the trauma-informed coaching emblem up on her site and a company saw it and contacted her and said, we need you. And she ended up getting a uh, $15,000 contract in the States to assist them with a trauma-informed coaching platform course. So it's interesting. I mean, uh, I guess the best way to get that type of work is to let people know that you're here and that this is the type of work that you do and you want to also be part of that. But yeah, it's um, the possibilities think, are endless, I think. Yeah, and at this point, this niche market is so new. Uh, we're right on that. We're right on the beginning of the bell curve. And so, uh, so it'll be a lot about you educating people that this is an actual you know, uh, accredited program through the International Coaching Federation. Uh, also to, as soon as you start the, the TICB program or TICC, you will be invited into the private Facebook group. And there's lots of sharing that goes on there. We wanna make sure that this is a very inclusive group. That's super important to us. Uh, we wanna see everybody succeed. There, there is enough work out there for all of us. And, uh, and so we do a lot of things in that in there. Brad and I are just starting to come up with a 12 month uh, agenda of things that we can do in there. Um, so I can talk about things about like promoting and marketing your, your, your business. Um, some of the other uh, graduates, they have expertise in like social media um, or in other trauma work and they are willing to share in that as well. So it's a super inclusive group uh, really want to see each other succeed and, and really grow this area. Beautiful. I just want to comment on Nadine's comments around intergenerational trauma and executive coaching trauma. Those are two that have been fast coming up for us a lot in classes as well. Thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah. So again, I do think that a lot of it is dependent upon where you want to go with it. It's interesting because we've had students step into class um, and start with one area. And then by the end of it, it's like they're in a completely different area, still in trauma, but they keep seeing these things coming up, I suspect through, you know, now that they have this lens. So Eric is saying one more question, what differentiates a trauma coach 
from the work that is done by registered counselors or therapists. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest thing that differentiates us from uh, counselors or therapists is that we do not deal with the past. We do not go in and um, dissect what went on. We can draw strength from the path, uh, the past. But what we do is sit in a complete coaching position and we work from a solution focused lens. And we're doing that in order to move people forward in a positive manner, because we don't believe that anyone is broken. They have everything that they need inside of them. So we're not coming to them saying, oh, you know, we need to diagnose you. We don't diagnose or treat. So we come from a completely different place. We say, you know what? I get that something's happened. It's made an imprint on your life. So I understand that piece of it, but let's look at your story and let's move you forward to become more resourceful and more resilient and to look at things from a more positive lens and be able to make your own solutions as opposed to let's dissect the old story and look where it did something wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, is that the last time I checked, I cannot change my past, but I have full control over my future. And that's really where we set in differentiating uh, departments when it comes to counselors and therapists. We really push that envelope to say, you know what, you got it, you have everything you need. And we're going to just sometimes they need a bit of uh, helping them with the sail on the boat to get them moving in the right direction. People are quite resourceful and resilient, and we have an opportunity to see that in our work. Do you want to add anything to that, Sue? I do, actually. So there's kind of two parts to that. So um, so we usually come in as trauma-informed coaches either after somebody has done like a psychotherapy or counseling or, or something along those lines, and they're well on their journey uh, you know, like to, to that healing path, and they're wanting to move forward. <clears throat> and or we can work alongside the uh, psychologist, psychotherapist, and counselors as well. So, so there's two parts there that we can do. But again, like Brad said, we do not treat and we do not diagnose. Yeah, and that's a good point. We talk we talk about aligning aligning um, yourself with other professionals in this work. It's quite interesting. I mean, we, we've had a few places that have come to us now, like pain clinics and places like that, that are in conversation with us about, you know, going, this is interesting stuff. And we've had clients that have done trauma-informed coaching. Can we talk about how we might move this forward in a medic, not in a medical for us, but in the medical platform as part of a secondary treatment? So, you know, the more I think that, um, uh, the world is looking at how we're treating instead of always going to a clinical level that we're starting to now look at the body from a holistic, a uh, mind and a, uh, you know, physical point of view. So it's interesting. Um, yeah. Again, I think it's, I think it's coming. It is, you know, and even um, uh, about a year ago, uh, my family doctor, I'd gone to see my family doctor and she's like, you're, you're a coach, right? And it's like, yeah. And so uh, uh, she's like, so what do you specialize in? So I told her and we had a, this fabulous conversation and she took like 50 of my carbs and, uh, and I get referrals from, from my own family doctor. So, you know, uh, so that's, that's another place. So that's another good place to start, <laughs> you know, they, because they already know you personally. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it really is about, as Susan always talks about, if you ever have an opportunity again to speak with her, which I'm sure you will, she talks about the ability to form those relationships. And that's really what we've done, you know, as well with our TICB and our TICC, having a Facebook page where we can become part of a growing family that supports each other not only in our coaching, but also individually as we go through it. Because as humans, we oftentimes are all going through the same thing at the same time. And we certainly have seen that over the last year. So that particular group of people, uh, after you are um, signed up or even, you know, even after you leave our course, 
you still have a hands in with that community that you also, um, there also has been some opportunities. The last class, uh, a woman from San Francisco was speaking about, uh, she didn't want to do the trauma-informed coaching work per se, because she was working on another level of her healing with her clients. But she was like, just get in touch with me because there's people that need it here in San Francisco. And I'd be happy to put you in touch with the uh, person that's looking for this type of work. So it's all about forming the relationships, being in communicative, uh, being communicative with each other and finding out, you know, where are the possibilities? Yeah. And Brad and I, we're really kind of open books. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we really want to support everybody. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a great field to work in and it's very complementary to so many other areas. And we just, uh, I don't know, I mean, just I think everybody that comes into this line of work, it, it is completely heartfelt. And I always ask people, you know, when you get up in the morning, um, do you, do you feel on purpose? And I can absolutely say hands down every single morning, I am eager to speak to potential students. I am eager to speak with my clients because I know that this will change your life. Yeah, it's true. It makes a huge difference. It's, uh, it's always, it's a, a very different thing to be living in your gift. So if this is something that is, as Susan calls it, a calling, then by all means, uh, take the time to invest and come and, and talk to us about what your future goals are with this type of work. And yes, we're in Seashelf and it is lovely here. A little cool tonight, but come visit any time when COVID's over. <laughs> any more questions before we wrap it up? Good. Well, I wanna thank you all so much for showing up here tonight and taking the time to invest in yourself. Please go forward this evening, this afternoon, or this morning, wherever you're calling in from, and take care of yourselves and reach out if you have any questions. And Sue, do you want to have any last words before we move off? I just look forward to having uh, conversations with each and every one of you. Take care, everyone. We bid you a farewell and a good evening from us. Thanks for showing up. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Have a fantastic evening.